Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about what Amazon MSK does to help with streaming event-driven applications, and particularly how one of our larger customers, Coinbase, are using Amazon MSK as an event store for their enterprise applications. My name is Simon Elliston Ball, and I'm a senior product manager on the MSK team. And today, we're going to talk about some of the things that MSK can do to help you. If you're familiar with the operational burdens of running Kafka today, then we're going to be able to give you a little bit of detail on how MSK gives time back to you, how you can take that operational time and give it back to your developers so they can really focus on the applications that matter to your business. We'll then hear from Coinbase about what they've done with that extra time and how they've built enterprise applications and new streaming applications around Amazon MSK. After that, we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we do within the service to guarantee the availability of these critical streams, the observability through metrics that we expose, and give you the trust to focus on your applications instead of your infrastructure. Streaming event-driven applications are absolutely critical to meeting the customer demands of today's modern architectures. We see this as customers become less patient, as they need faster responses, as latencies become important, and people stop wanting to wait for their data. We see this with the growth of our customers as well. In MSK, we serve tens of thousands of customers on streaming Kafka-based applications, using hundreds of thousands of brokers running every day. For those who've run Kafka on their own, they will be aware of many of the operational burdens. I'm just listing some of them here. You have the challenge of running Zookeeper. It may be going away in the technology stack before too long, but it's still going to be there for those legacy applications. And you still have controllers, which are going to be very similar in their role uh, to the Zookeeper of today. You have challenges around security, around OS patching, infrastructure patching around key rotation for certificate management and all of the core operating system patches that you have to apply to keep a service safe and secure and available. There's also the challenge of storage performance. If you're managing very high speed, very low latency applications, storage performance becomes critical to being able to serve your customers. That's where some of the monitoring that uh, Amazon MSK really comes into its own to help you solve some of those performance problems, but also for the service to respond to those problems without you needing to be aware of them and handle things like the replacement of failed infrastructure without impacting your cluster's availability. Another area which is common with self-managed or other managed Kafka solutions is the challenge of replicating your data between different availability zones. To achieve durability, Kafka will take a message as it comes into one broker and then replicate that across other brokers. The way that we deploy this in Amazon MSK is to separate those across different availability zones so that you have the security against an individual data center failing or an individual zone failing uh, within your region. Now, with this cross-replication traffic uh, under ordinary circumstances or in a self-managed environment, that can quickly add up to being significant amounts of money. With MSK, this cross-availability zone replication traffic is entirely included within the service. Another key operational challenge that we find cuts across a lot of the workflows that we apply for MSK is the challenge of rolling restarts. We have here an example of upgrading your Kafka version. Now, one of the big challenges around this is being able to upgrade and perform complex maintenance actions without losing any of that data that we've replicated across availability zones and without losing access to that data as well. So we focus on both durability and availability during, ups, uh, during upgrades and restarts. If we take out a single broker, for example, to perform this upgrade, then the data is already replicated onto other brokers and Kafka will automatically rebalance your consumers and producers into those other brokers as leaders are moved. Now, once we've upgraded that one broker to a, a new version, for example, in this case, 2.8.2, uh, yeah, we see that we've still got replication traffic and we've still got traffic within the cluster on the old version. 
I called it 271 here for simplicity, but if you are really aware of what you're looking at there, then there's a whole other set of version stacks to manage for the interbroker protocol. What we can then do is move on to the next broker, and the next, and the next, and the next. Then eventually we have all our brokers up on the correct version. At this point, we can then change the protocol between them. Now this is quite complex, operationally challenging, and uh, can take a significant amount of time. The MSK service does this for you transparently without losing any availability uh, with 100% uptime during all of these restart operations. Another area where the service really helps you to maintain that availability is a tool that we call Deep Health Checks. This really comes down to not just the metrics that we collect around Kafka, but also deep experience that we have from running hundreds of thousands of Kafka brokers in production. With Deep Health Checks, we also apply more intelligence to the metrics that you would get from an ordinary Kafka installation. We apply Kinesis Data Analytics applications powered by Apache Flink to do detailed window behavior analysis on your Kafka cluster so that we can detect things like partial failures. Partial failures are one of the really challenging issues with distributed systems. It may be very well to take down a node while you're doing a rolling restart and doing an upgrade of that and for that to disappear. But the worst case is when you take down part of that node or you see slowdowns in your disk access, for example. These sort of challenges are very difficult to handle. And that is why we have built the Deep Health Check system to be able to capture, categorize, and automate the mitigation of these errors. Security is another critical element for any streaming service. As we put more and more business critical data into streams, security is becoming a key factor and a key feature for many of our customers. We handle the basics of security, we handle OS patching, we handle the key rotation uh, without needing any customer intervention. We can also provide multiple authentication methods. Uh, you have the option of SAS or SCRAM authentication, for example, which allows you to use usernames and passwords managed with Amazon's security, uh, Secret Manager. We've also recently added support for AWS Identity and Access Management, IAM. What this allows you to do is consolidate the governance of your data security for both authentication and authorization across uh, the same platform that you may be using for other elements of your analytics stack across the Amazon infrastructure. Something else that we've added is the ability to choose multiple options for authentication recently. We've recently added the update security option, which gives you the choice of changing the security on an existing cluster to add additional methods or take them away, uh, but also to run multiple security methods at the same time. So if you have clients, maybe legacy clients, which depend on, for example, mutual TLS authentication, but you also want to get the benefits of IAM authorization, then you can run both of those simultaneously on the same cluster now, again, without having to experience any downtime on that cluster. The other piece of security is, of course, the encryption that we provide. We provide extensive encryption at rest through customer prided and customer managed keys, as well as encryption in motion for all of your data. So it's safe and encrypted at all stages uh, within its journey through Amazon MSK. Now, we've talked a lot about the rolling restart starts and the need for availability. For us, maintenance is just business as usual. All of these processes, all of these upgrades, all of these certificate renewals, all of these changes to configuration and fundamental things like upgrading versions of Kafka on the cluster or patching operating systems is just what we do day in, day out. This is why all the maintenance actions that we have are actually included within our SLA. So we don't account for any downtime in maintenance because your streams need to be continuously available for your business. So for us, downtime, for any reason, be it maintenance or be it accidental, is covered within our SLA. So now let's introduce Dan Moore, who is a developer at 
Coinbase, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what Coinbase have done with Amazon MSK and how they were able to build uh, a range of applications on top of the streaming platforms that Amazon offers. Thank you, Simon. My name is Dan Moore, tech lead at Coinbase. I'm here today with my colleague, Jin Yu Lu, staff data platform engineer. And today we'll be discussing how we're powering streaming crypto applications at massive scale using MSK. We're inspired by the vision of Apache Kafka when they say, event streaming is the digital equivalent of the human body's central nervous system. It is the technological foundation for the always on world. And we have a very similar philosophy at Coinbase. We see streaming as the lifeblood of our microservices architecture. Architecture that allows us to react in near real time to actual product and service events happening in the world. We have many streaming use cases internally at Coinbase, but a few noteworthy ones are here. One, we're streaming all of our core product clickstream events. That's all the user interactions on our front end web and mobile apps, along with all the back end service events that go with those. We're streaming all that to MSK topics. Downstream, Apache Flink is consuming those, doing stream processing, and this ultimately yields our machine learning feature store service. Second, we're streaming crypto ledger events from our exchange services. Uh, downstream, we have long running processors and consumers that are able to calculate in near real time our crypto inventory levels, uh, which, we, which provides great information for accounting and trading teams internally. Finally, we're streaming the raw blockchain transaction data from networks like Ethereum directly to MSK topics. Downstream, various internal consumers can hook into this data for their own applications, but we're also building uh, fast caching services to tell us information like for a particular, particular crypto wallet address, what are all the NFTs associated with it. But how did we actually design the streaming architecture to pull off these applications? At the heart of our streaming stack is AWS MSK. We run a pretty sizable cluster in production, a TLS authenticated cluster that consists of 60 broker nodes across three availability zones for reliability. Each broker node has around 16 terabytes of disk space. Built on top of MSK is a custom Kafka security service. This houses all the access control lists and syncs those permissions to the Zookeeper nodes that come packaged with MSK. That drives our service uh, read-write access control at the topic level, which is crucial for us because different teams at Coinbase have different access to data sets. The security service also signs certificate requests, or CSRs, and sends those back to the client so they can do proper authentication and authorization when they start consuming and producing messages. To increase developer adoption of Kafka internally, we build a lightweight off the sidecar container. And all you have to do is plug this into your existing Docker Compose file. And on your services boot up, it's going to automatically ping the Kafka security service for a signed certificate. If you're a valid uh, Kafka service, you'll get those signed certs stored in a shared volume, shared Docker volume, where you can easily access them when you're instantiating your producer or consumer object. And the final piece of core architecture we want to highlight is Kafka Connect. This powers a lot of change data capture internally at Coinbase uh, from data stores like Postgres, MongoDB, Snowflake, S3. We use this in a lot of different ways. Um, we're, we're essentially able to use the write-ahead log to detect any database table, additions, deletions, updates, and, and wire those as Kafka messages to MSK. We've, used, we've built this out entirely open source using sync and source uh, connectors from the Kafka community. It's a rich and vibrant community and we're very glad to be part of it. So the fancy uh, technical diagrams are great, but how do, how do we fare in terms of actual streaming performance? What you're seeing here are the real end-to-end -end latencies on our production cluster from load testing. As you can see, latency increases when payload size increases. From up to 100 kilobyte message size, as you can see with the, the uh, cell shaded green, we're sub 10 millisecond latency uh, uh, in terms of median and medium latency. For P99 latency, uh, we're sub 25 millisecond up to 100 kilobyte message size. We're seeing some pretty impressive numbers live in our production cluster. We're handling over a million concurrent broker connections on some of our largest services. 
We're seeing 5.9 gigabytes a second of egress traffic out of our cluster, greater than 960 terabytes of total prod cluster disk space. We're running 60 brokers, M5, 8X large instances, and we can easily upgrade those if we need to, thanks to MSK and the rolling updates. And finally, we're seeing an impressive 5.9 milliseconds of average end-to-end -end latency for 500 byte messages. That's two orders of magnitude less than our previous streaming solution, and it's what's unlocked those innovative streaming applications we talked about earlier. But our core Kafka architecture is just the beginning. Now I'm going to hand it off to Jin Yu to discuss the powerful stream tooling we built on top of MSK. Thank you, Dan. Uh, my name is Jin Yu Liu, staff engineer at Coinbase. One goal of our team at Coinbase is to build pave the roads for other teams to quickly onboard streaming use cases without friction and take full advantage of the Apache Kafka ecosystem. With Kafka security and topic provisioning solutions in place as Dan described, we continue to explore and tackle other challenges and pain points faced by engineers. The long-term goal is to make Kafka and our streaming infra a self-service at Coinbase. Speaking about the common concerns for engineers, the first is development simplicity and abstraction. Besides MSK, AWS also offers Kinesis, SQS, and SNS. We realize that these uh, streaming and queuing systems suit different use cases at Coinbase. It would be beneficial to build a layer of abstraction with a reusable programming model and a common API to improve engineering efficiency. When it comes to observability, MSK offers numerous metrics at broker level, topic level, or partition level to help us evaluate the performance and health status of the entire Kafka clusters, as well as individual brokers. For instance, cluster-wide topic count, partition count, under replicated uh, partition count, which is a key indicator reflecting the broker heal status. Networking ingress egress in terms of message per second, uh, bytes per second, TCP connection count, CPU usage, disk usage, partition level consumer lag, and more. As the streaming platform owner, we must go beyond the Kafka brokers metrics and evaluate the experience of individual clients. For instance, end-to-end -end message lag from the moment a message left the producer to the moment it was received by a consumer. Message publishing success rate, failure count, and all kinds of client scene latencies. Note it is impractical for the team to monitor different kinds dashboard and collecting their custom metrics. Regarding availability and disaster recovery, once we place Kafka on the critical path of online services, we strive to meet the availability SLA by creating dashboards, monitors, and alarms. In case things go south, we should have some contingency plans to mitigate the incidents. Given these requirements or concerns, we've evaluated two different solutions. A proxy service, which proxies all ingress and egress traffic of Kafka clusters, or even Kinesis, SQS, and SNS. The chart on the right-hand side demonstrates the networking topology, which resembles a network gateway. Notice the traffic between services and the proxies is either REST or gRPC based. The proxy subscribes to some dynamic metadata for, from a common control plan and emits metrics logs to some observability platforms like Datadog. The second option evaluated is Client SDK or a client library. Think of it as a wrapper API on top of the standard Kafka client libraries in different programming languages. In this chart, individual services invokes the local client SDK 
to communicate with multiple Kafka clusters, possibly alongside Kinesis SQS or SNS endpoints. The SDK embedded in different services can be coordinated through a common control plan for dynamic message routing failover over rate limiting purposes. Note the client SDK doesn't run as a sidecar container, although it resembles service mesh in terms of the networking topology. We've done a side-by-side -side comparison between these two approaches. For the proxy service, the pros are simple networking topology, global quota, and rate limiting can be enforced at the service level. However, the downsides are expensive development operation and hardware costs. Difficult to canary, probably needs some tiered deployments. Risks of incidents with a large blast radius. There are feature losses as well. GRPC between services and the proxy is a blessing and curse. On one hand, it is microservice friendly. On the other hand, it makes Kafka transaction and item potent publishing impossible. At last, this approach introduces extra networking hubs, meaning extended latencies. And if we take a look at the, the uh, Khan SDK approach, the pros are simple architecture, low cost, low development and maintenance and hardware costs. In fact, no additional hardware is required. Low risk due to incremental releases, we can always deploy a new release of the SDK to the least critical services first. There's also no extra networking hubs, no performance penalties, no feature losses, which means item potent publishing and Kafka transaction remain available for at least the Java and Python clients. The cons are, it's hard to keep everyone on the same page, meaning the, the same SDK version. It's also harder to enforce global quotas or uh, rate limiting. The winner is Client SDK. The team managed to ship a streaming SDK in two months without compromising any desired feature this, uh, highlighted below. Uh, it supports four streaming platforms, namely MSK, Kinesis, SNS, SQS, with a platform neutral API and data model. It also comes with a couple canned pre-tuned configurations optimized for latency support based on comprehensive benchmarking results. Schema registration integration for better data quality, we encourage the use of structured data and backward compatible schema evolution in our streaming data pipelines. Protobuf is the primary encoding format supported at Coinbase. We've also created a few universal dashboards uh, displaying metrics collected from SDK embedded in different services, helping us monitor the uh, client experience. For incident mitigation, we introduced kill switches and dynamic message routing for load balancing and failover purposes. A few screenshots from our universal dashboards. The first one displays the uh, streaming SDK version running on individual uh, client services so that we can push the owner for an upgrade if they are too far behind. On the right-hand side is the message publishing success rate from a client's perspective. Bottom left shows the uh, published message count breakdown by clients. Bottom right show lags seen by clients. These metrics are very comprehensive to help us understand our customer's experience and surface potential issues with the streaming SDK or the Kafka clusters. The next thing I would like to touch briefly is cross VPC connectivity. We had been facing the challenge of connecting our MSK clusters from multiple AWS accounts. 
At Coinbase, Private Link is the only accepted solution, even though AWS offers a couple more options, uh, such as VPC pairing and Transit Gateway. At this moment, MSK doesn't have building support on Private Link yet. Another challenge is that service downtime is not allowed during this transition. In this effort, the AWS MSK team has been super supportive. They shared a, an AWS tech blog from Goldman Sachs regarding how to enable private link for MSK. The team also evaluated and stamped the solution we proposed. Our solution is largely based on Goldman Sachs tech blog with a couple improvements. The main idea is to set Kafka advertised listeners to point to NLBs, network load balancers. Every Kafka broker maps to a unique port on the network load balancers. We've completed a seamless transition with zero downtime with the following two tricks. First, we preserved individual broker's hostname and IP on row 53 such that the existing broker bootstrap URLs remain effective all the time. Secondly, one of our MSK cluster has 60 brokers. We avoided the hard limit of 50 listeners per NLB by, by binding two NLBs to the same MSK cluster. Uh, talking about the future state, we are actively working on these tasks, improving data quality by increasing the adoption of schema registry. Unlock advanced use cases such as structured stream of Spark, streaming data analysis, and processing with KSQL DB and QuestDB. Capturing and visualizing data lineage by adding message headers and auditing functionalities. Event-driven architecture. On our roadmap, we will develop an event bus backed by Kafka to decouple microservices at Coinbase in order to push service availability, scalability, and resilience to the extreme. With that, I'm going to hand off to Simon. Thank you, Xinyu, for sharing some of the things that you've built around uh, Mountain MSK and Kinesis as well, I noticed that, to make life easier for streaming developers. This is something we see a lot of our customers doing these days as they try and make it easier for their organizations to consume as they move away from traditional monolith type applications towards adopting more event driven and particularly serverless type architectures. Thanks also Dan for sharing some of those great insights on some of the range of things that are possible with these event driven applications and some of the things that you can do to take these low latency event processing platforms and turn them into real business value and innovative solutions for your customers as well. At MSK, we believe that we can make Kafka run best as possible so that you can carry on to build these applications so that you can focus your development time on what matters for your business and run the applications, run the client experience and run your end customer experience rather than having to run the infrastructure that makes up Kafka. Our focus, our relentless focus on operational excellence is entirely about achieving the availability that you need for these always on streaming applications that require 24 seven support, require continuous processing of unbounded streams of events coming from the real world or from even the synthetic world. For this, we think that the observability is absolutely crucial. It's good to see the kind of thing that people are building with dashboards, not just to observe their own Kafka clusters, but their businesses as a whole. For us, that observability is the critical element for achieving trust in these mission critical power platforms that you need to run those streaming applications. The dashboards that people build through our support of metric sources like CloudWatch, uh, through Prometheus and through other integrations with partners like Datadog, I think you mentioned earlier, give us that strength to be able to say not only that we will look after all these things for you, but that we can prove it and that you can trust us. And that is reflected in the SLAs that we bring around Amazon MSK. 
Security is the other critical element we discussed, and that security for trust is absolutely necessary for MSK. You saw how Coinbase used uh, a service to manage their certificates and manage things like certificate signing requests, manage centralizing and consolidating those essential credential materials which are necessary to creating a trustworthy, secure platform around streaming. You'll see more and more of these things coming into MSK as we take on more of that management overhead for you so that you can get back to focusing on what your business really wants you to focus on, which is the huge value you can get from streaming applications. With services around MSK like Kinesis Data Analytics running Apache Flink in a similarly managed fashion, you can also get huge benefits for actually writing those applications. With Kinesis Data Analytics Studio, you now have an interactive notebook experience to be able to write SQL against your live streaming data out of Kinesis or out of Amazon MSK. With this stack of complete managed stream processing services that forms the MSK and Kinesis family, we believe that we really can run this streaming infrastructure for you so that you can generate value for your businesses. With that, thank you very much. My, I've been Simon Elliston Ball. We have Dan Moore and Xinyu Lu here from Coinbase, and we will be very happy to take your questions.